Yo, what up, basketball card collectors, investors, and dealers. Cajun Cardboard here, coming at you from the great state of Louisiana, as always, right in the capital, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, I stumbled across this today. I was going to pay for my December uh, auction winnings, and I happened to notice a drop down, and I ended up on a tab that turned into, um, it was an option under members, and uh, it's something called the PWCC Vintage Market Indices. Um, and what this is, in a nutshell, 50 words or less, uh, and I know Card Ladder has done this. They have player indexes. They have sport indexes, uh, things like that. I've seen it on Market Movers. or I've heard about it on Market Movers as well. This is an index that I think, and we're going to read through some of these criteria together, but this is an index that tracks the performance of, uh, in essence, with some asterisks, the top 100 uh, market value cards, and it's called vintage for a reason. You'll see up here, vintage. So it's cards, they stop it at the year um, 1999. So this is not gonna be indicative of the current market. It's not gonna be indicative because it's not gonna include any cards post 2000 uh, at all. But for those of you who collect vintage, or for those of you who collect modern and ultra modern, and you want to freaking calm down and relax and not click play on every video that says the market's crashing, the hobby is dying, uh, we're, we're going to cease to exist, you know, collectors are turning into dinosaurs, we're going to be extinct. Uh, all the doom and gloom shit that we're all seeing on every single YouTube video, it's either doom and gloom where people want clicks because they're telling you how bad everything is and how much worse it's going to get, or it's people blowing sunshine up your ass, uh, Satan, you know, acting like nothing is going on with the ultra modern cards in base and silver and the non number parallels and, and stuff like that. It's a little bit of both. Uh, some cards are dropping, some cards are breaking records. And if you don't believe me, um, go ask somebody who collects different types of cards than you do. Um, because it's happening uh, good and bad. It's happening in the hobby every day. And just like in the world, um, I, my assumption is it's always been that way and it always will be that way. Uh, not all types of cards are going to go up and not all types of cards are going to go down, especially not at the same time because money is always moving in the hobby. It's constantly in flux and we're seeing some of that today. Anyway, getting back to it, this is a vintage indices where you can search the top 100, the top 500, the top 2,500 um, cards uh, based on market value. Uh, and then PWCC, I'm going to kind of skip through some of this stuff down here and just show you the graph. But essentially, this is what we're talking about. So if this is good on your screen, hopefully my audio and visual is okay. It's going to get better really soon. I promise you guys, stick with me. Uh, it's going to be pro in just a few weeks. Uh, but this is the PWCC 100 index. And we're going to go up and talk about what's included in the 100. But you'll see up here, there's a drop down. So you can go to the 500, the 2500, you know, the 100 to 500. You can, you know, include some, exclude some. But this is the 100 most valuable cards. It tracks them on a percentage basis. If you had invested in them in 2008, and the S&P 500 is on here as well. So you can show this to all your dorky stockbroker friends who are, oh my God, I'm gonna offend people. Um, I have so many financial advisor friends. You know what, let me just, let me just uh, cut to the chase. It compares it to the S&P 500. So the next time someone laughs at you for investing in an alternative assets, such as sports cards, you can show them this. Now again, reminder, this is only cards pre-2000. But haven't you always heard, if you want a slow, steady growth, invest in vintage cards. If you want uh, explosive growth, invest in ultra modern or modern. Players who are active because their cards can spike and increase more. Well, this is interesting because these are old ass cards. And down here, there's going to be a list of the cards included. I'm going to show you some of those cards. But these are what they're calling vintage is pre-2000. Normally, what I would call vintage myself, personally, is pre-1980. But for all intents and purposes, their vintage 100 is pre-1999 or pre-2000. So as you can see, look at this graph. So the S&P 500 is the red. And you'll see there's 196% return on your money um, if you invested it in the year 2008. Look what the vintage has done. Uh, so it got up uh, here to like the 960s, high, 961. And I think it ends, it's hard to get the cursor on it, 931%. So if you, if you follow it, okay, so here's this big monster spike, right? And then we get into 2018. And this, the vintage actually goes down heading into 2018. Honestly, not coincidentally, that is when I think if they did a modern 100, you would see the modern rising and the vintage decreasing. I think that's when people kind of got caught up in the modern and kind of let the, the vintage go. But then you'll see this crazy massive spike. 
this is vintage stuff, y'all. So this is low, relatively low pop, old school stuff. None of these dudes are playing sports anymore. Uh, maybe there's a couple playing sports from the 90s. I think Vince Carter retired, so in basketball, I, I don't know if there's very many left from the 90s that are playing baseball, basketball, football, hockey, tennis, golf. But, um, but you'll see up here a 961% return on your money in 13 years. I don't know about y'all, but that doesn't sound slow and steady. That just sounds... You know, maybe it was slow and steady, you know, here for, for five, six, seven, eight years, but then you got to jump here and then you're slow and steady and then you got an crazy, incredible spike. Now, you can see this little turn down at the end here. That's not surprising. That's the market in general and that's what we're talking about and that's where all the videos about the sky is falling come from. Um, but uh, that's just kind of giving you an idea of how the PWCC 100 has performed in comparison to the S&P 500. Now, here's kind of uh, what's included, okay? I'm not going to take too much time on this. I want you all to read this. If you're interested and you like data and you're a nerd like me, read this. It kind of tells you what goes into the PWCC 100. It's a living, breathing 100, which means some cards can come in, some cards can go out. Cards have to sell a certain number of times. Uh, they have to sell a certain number of times within the past year. And uh, certain cards are excluded if they don't sell enough. Um, only auction sales on PWCC are included. Uh, no buy it nows, no private offers, only verified auction sales that are paid for. The data is comprised of only PSA cards. This is only PSA, no SGC, no BGS. They did that because it was uniform and easy to obtain. Uh, I think PWCC worked in concert with, uh, as you can see here, vintage card prices. If you guys are vintage collectors, you know what that is. Um, but yeah, that's what PWCC uh, derived a lot of their data from. Um, only grades PSA 4 and up were included. It's only cards pre-2000. Uh, there's the trade frequency minimum. So cards have to have sold 10 times in the last 10 years and at least two times in the last 12 months. There's an outlier algorithm. So if a card you know, jumps you know, 500% in a six-month period, they flag it and it's excluded from the 100. So it tries to eliminate all those anomalies that would, uh, you know, if there's an algorithm that eliminates those anomalies that would kind of skew the results. Um, so um, anyway, that's kind of the rules there. Uh, like I said, the, the, it says the PWCC indices are dynamic, means cards go in, cards go out. They are not intended to be read as a universal gauge because it doesn't include 2000 to 2017. Um, what else? Uh, they ask you to provide feedback. If you have ideas on how to make this uh, graph and this, um, this data tool uh, more productive, card ladder guys, y'all might have some ideas for PWCC. Uh, you can actually email them at cs at pwccmarketplace.com and they'll, uh, they'll look into it. Uh, but anyway, here's our graph for the top 100. Let's go down here. Um, I, for some reason, I think the sorting stuff is not working because uh, I wanted to sort just basketball cards because I'm primarily a basketball card channel. But when I click sort, you know, I get baseball, but then I go basketball, then I go back to baseball. So I don't get it. But um, just some of the cards we're talking about here. And you also can't sort by market value, which sucks because that would be really cool because you could start with the most expensive one. Uh, well, this one works. So going backwards, it works. Um, but I think going the other way, for some reason, I thought it didn't. Maybe it does. Okay, no, it is working. Okay, so let's sort it by value. Uh, so most expensive card in here is the Mickey Mantle. I mean, you can, it shows you the five-year return on investment. It shows you the 10-year return on investment. That's pretty badass. Uh, Mickey Mantle, Wilt Chamberlain, PSA 9. You know, look at the return on a Wilt Chamberlain, PSA 9 over 10 years, 4,710%. I mean, y'all got to be kidding me. Um, can you imagine owning one of those and just sitting on it, loving it, looking at it? You know, you know, some people like to touch and feel their cards or you just look at it sitting in the PWCC vault. And, and while you're, uh, you know, loving it, sending pictures of it to people, swagging, flashing it on Instagram. It's gone up 4,719%. That's bananas. The Jordan PSA 10s on here, uh, similar numbers. It's gone up 562% in the last five years. Uh, and that's based on a 266 market value, guys. Um, that's not correct. Like that card's selling for much higher than 266 right now. Yeah, we know it got to 700, 800, whatever. Uh, but I think recently it's been selling for a I can go look at it later, but I think it's selling for 300 pretty consistently well-centered ones. Uh, but that's a 4,000% return. Um, so these are the kind of cards that are included. The Kobe Refractor 10 is in here, 4,800% return. Um, so I just want you all to look at stuff like this and look at cards like this and the names on this list and see that you can make serious returns 
And, and you know, some of you are going to say, well, it's too late now. You know, I want to catch the next wave. I don't want to jump on this wave. Well, that's probably what could have been said right here in 2016 when everybody said well, vintage is slow and steady and then vintage spiked like crazy. And here you are, 290%. People probably said the same thing. Oh, it's too late to invest in vintage. Well, people started taking profits and then here it goes, right? Supply goes up, value goes down. And then here we go with another one. So what's gonna happen? Is this gonna go down here and then I'm off the screen now, but is it gonna go up after that? Who knows? But look at the names on here that are included in this. This is as low risk as you get in the hobby. Ricky Henderson, Walter Payton, Babe Ruth, Jackie Robinson, Bill Russell, Wayne Gretzky, Kobe Bryant, Willie Mays, Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle, Michael Jordan, Derek Jeter, Will Chamberlain. It doesn't get any more stable, uh, beautiful, and iconic than that. I know a lot of people are just kind of fascinated and infatuated with modern shiny, and I am too. I have both. Um, but there is value in vintage. There is low risk, legit appreciation that, again, these aren't my numbers, that clearly outperforms the S&P 500. I mean, if you think putting money in IBM is safer than putting money in Wilt Chamberlain, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and try to convince you what to do, but damn, man. Um, I mean, the numbers are the numbers. Uh, but again, nobody can see the future. So maybe IBM or Microsoft or Apple. Uh, and again, S&P 500 doesn't represent those per se. I mean, that red line might be up here. I don't know. But um, generally speaking, if you look at the average, you know, of the cards in the, in the PWCC 100, 932. And now that is a long window, right? That is 13 years. But if in 2008, you'd have said, hey, give me 10 grand and I'll give you 932% of 10 grand 13 years from now, I would have handed you as many grand as I could go get my hands on. I would have borrowed money to give you money. But here's the beauty of this, of this list. You know, you're thinking to yourself, well, that's great. I don't have enough money to possibly own any of the cards on the PWCC 100. I mean, I'm looking at the list and I probably have... I'm going to go ahead and guess. I don't even need to go through all 100. I probably have one card on this list, um, the Jordan. So um, as you know, I'm probably biased towards that card. Bill Russell, seven. I'm looking for basketball cards. Okay, I have two cards. So I have the Jordan base and I have the Jordan sticker. Um, I highly doubt I have any other cards on this list. I'm scrolling real quick. Uh, basketball, George Mikan, no. Cool card to own, 48 Bowman. Uh, what other basketball? This is very baseball heavy now, guys. And of course, baseball is thought to be even more slow and steady. Old dudes with white hair and glasses, uh, you know, talking about dudes that haven't played in 75 years. But that, I'm telling you, that PWCC 100, I just flipped quick. That looked extremely baseball heavy. I mean, there was definitely more baseball than football, basketball, and hockey combined. But here's the beauty. You can switch out. Let's go to 500, okay? So now we're getting into cards that some of us may actually own, right? Uh, so... The return decreases because we know higher end, the highest of the high end, has outperformed the mid high end. And we know the mid high has outperformed the mid. And we know the mid has outperformed the low. Or at least, generally speaking, for the most part, the more you spend on a card, your chances of a percentage return are greater because the pop is lower. At least it seems like history has proven that out. And these indices kind of prove that out. Uh, again, for cards before 2000. So you see the PWCC 500 will now include 500 cards, and it's going to include some of these cards in lower grades, but it's, you know, if we sort it from market value going the other way, it includes a, a I don't even know who Willie Jones is, but it's going to include some of these lower cards, a Nabisco Pete Rose PSA 9 that's only 900 bucks. And look, it'll include these cards, and this is going to bring your return on investment down. You're going to, you see at the cards at the bottom, you're going to see losses on some of these cards, right? People taking profits. But then you're going to see 50% gains on some of these cards as well. If we go to page two, I mean, these are all cards that we could go get if we wanted to. 1700, 1700. Everybody can move cards and go get cards like this. I'm looking for a basketball. A Lenny Wilkins 61 Fleer rookie. Up 23% over five years, up 54% over 10 years. Those are the kind of cards that people actually have in their collection, like normal human mortals have in their collection. So the PWCC 500 is more indicative uh, for the vintage index, in my opinion. If you want to expand it out to 2,500, your return is going to go down, right? But man, that's 400%. That's 400% return on your investment. And the S&P is still the same 197. So look at it right? It's neck and neck with the S&P, right? It kind of wavers. It kind of fluctuates. One takes the lead. One takes it back. One takes the lead. One takes it back. And then here we are in December of last year, 
All hell breaks loose and vintage makes its mark and starts this crazy run. And there you see it, right? And that's where it goes from, oh, they're both about 160% return, which again, that's fine. Uh, I'm always, if you ask me, do I want to stare at a stock certificate for Tesla or do I want to stare at a Mickey Mantle PSA 8? I mean, that's a no brainer, man. Um, which one's a better conversation piece? Hey, I have four shares of Tesla. Or, hey, I have a 55 mantle PSA 8. Here's a picture of it, you know. Um, here, here's a Wilt Chamberlain, you know, PSA 4. Uh, or, or here's my stock certificate in, you know, uh, Microsoft. I mean, come on, man. Nobody talks about that crap. It's almost, it's almost like boasting about sports cards is encouraged and, and welcome and fun. And it creates a great conversation piece with even non-collectors. But boasting about your stock gains is just kind of you know, kind of an a-hole move to be quite honest. It's kind of an arrogant, you know, just kind of condescending flex that nobody wants to hear about. I don't want to hear about your investment in the stock market, especially if some financial advisor told you what to do. You're just taking orders. Um, this is this is fun stuff, man. This is making more money fun and, 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 and enjoying it, not even feeling it and not even feeling like you're putting your money away and investing it. Um, and again, this also assumes that you know, all of us with strong hands uh, at some point do liquidate uh, some of these cards, which, you know, if you know me, you know, my biggest problem is selling cards to realize profits because I like to keep the cards. So um, anyway, I just wanted you guys to see this. Um, if you really uh, want to look again at the at what's included in this and how they come up with these calculations, and this is going to be very similar to the card ladder stuff, um, I, except uh, one thing I have not been able to figure out is whether or not these are only cards, uh, sales included in here, sales from PWCC auctions. Um, I don't think it is. I think it's all sales. I'm not sure. Uh, that's something that I could probably email CS or Jesse might be able to answer or one of the PWCC reps if they see this video maybe can comment. I don't think this is only uh, data uh, derived from PWCC auctions, monthly and premier. I think it is all data that was provided to them by vintagecardprices.com. If it, if they didn't uh, reference vintagecardprices.com, I might think that this was all in-house PWCC data sales results. But I think it's a, uh, I think it's open, and that's obviously really important. But I think it is. If anybody knows whether it includes outside. Uh, outside sales like eBay and whatever, eBay auctions, you know, golden auctions. I, I think it does. Um, but comment below if you do know. Anyway, I thought this was cool. I stumbled on it. I had no intention of making a video this morning, but when I got to the office and I saw this, I was like, shit, this is something really cool. I didn't know about it, and I have a PWCC vault. I'm always on the website, and I just happened to stumble across it. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Again, if you like my videos, hit the like, uh, subscribe, like, hit the bell icon for notifications. Every Monday, I do basketball card battles, which is an investment episode. And every Friday, I do a deep dive for Jordan collectors into a different Jordan insert or parallel, and it's called Explore the Card. And I've got another one coming out this coming Friday and another one coming out Monday and then Friday and then Monday and, and every week after that. So hopefully you guys enjoy the content and we can build a library of some pretty cool stuff that, that some of you uh, late subscribers can go back and watch and fill up some of your time and enjoy the hobby. Um, thanks again for listening. Uh, peace. Hope you have a great week of collecting.